G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a quick video just to show you a, a neat little workflow um, which lets you schedule the work sets of an element, which most of you probably know you can't do by default in Revit. So I'd like to thank uh, Mohammed for his question um, from Tunisia. Uh, he came to me with this question on LinkedIn and it got me wondering um, whether you could, and then I remembered that you can actually set parameters quite easily using Dynamo, um, so I thought this would be a great example of showing how you can do that using a, a bit of an abstract workflow. So by default, uh, the work set is a parameter of most elements. However, it's not available in many schedules such as wall schedules. So this can be a bit limiting when you're trying to audit things because a lot of the time, the easiest way to audit elements is to capture them in a schedule and manage them in bulk. So there is a way to schedule it, um, but it's sort of not the, the work set parameter. It's just a way of getting the data from that parameter into another one. So we're gonna set up a new parameter or a shared parameter in this case read the work sets value or name, and then we're gonna set the new parameter value to this and then control this using a schedule. And there is an exception we'll have to deal with, which is elements in model groups, because by default, these elements are meant to obtain the work set that their host group uh, or that their, their owning group belongs to. There is sometimes a bug where it might revert to the work set that it was placed on by the user inside the model group. So say that these structural walls, the user was on the structural work set, Sometimes these walls might adopt the structural work set instead of the host group's work set, which is the site. It's a very common bug that I notice, um, but if you manage your work sets carefully and always check that you're in the right active work set, it tends not to happen. But we still can't uh, handle the work sets of these individual elements, so we're gonna find an exception in order to identify them to the user. And we're gonna be using some nodes from Clockwork today, specifically the element group, element work set, and element name plus nodes. And we'll be using Dynamo 2.0.3 today, uh, but I believe that most versions that run Clockwork can achieve the same workflow. So without further ado, let's jump into my model. So essentially I've taken the Autodesk basic sample project and I've created a set of work sets. In this case, I've made an internal facade, structure, furniture, and site work set um, in order to place all the elements. And I've manually placed all the elements onto these work sets. Um, I can see here these elements are on a site work set, but they're in a group. So note that when I tab select these elements, as I was saying, uh, this work set parameter is unavailable for editing. So we won't be able to set this parameter using Dynamo either as a result. Um, but what we can do is at least identify it as in a group. But we're gonna essentially set up a workflow so that we can populate a parameter value. So the first thing we need to do is add a parameter that can contain this data. So we're gonna add a shared parameter. So I'll just select a manual work set parameter, which is just a text field that I've created. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure that it can vary by group instance because not all groups may necessarily be on the same work set. So neither will their elements. So we need to let this be different per model group. I'm just gonna add it to walls in this case. And then I'll just go, okay. In fact, I might actually just add it to one more category so you can see how flexible it is, or oh, the script is once I run it. So I'll just add it to doors as well. And now, all of my walls and doors should have gained a new parameter called manual work set. In this case, I will just actually refresh this parameter value. It seems to have been held on, it seems to have held on to the value that I was playing with when I tested the script. So I'll just quickly uh, modify this value in all but the ones in the group. Oops, sorry, cat a toe. So I'll essentially clear this value so that now, now that should have an empty field. So I'll just move my cut. Always likes coming when I do videos. Um, so what I need to do now is run a Dynamo script. So we're gonna build a very basic script um, that's still quite powerful. So we need to get a categories node first, because we wanna be able to apply this one category at a time. If we apply it to all elements in the model, on large projects, you'll typically find the model will crash. So it's better to do this in a controlled manner. And typically when you're auditing, a lot of the time you will order elements by category. So we'll just pick walls in this case walls okay and we're going to get all elements of category so this will be all the elements in the project of this particular category so it could take a while to collect these elements in a larger project um, so just be mindful that you might want to save or back up before you run this just in case you crash on smaller projects probably not as much of a problem so we're going to get the element group node first and we're going to find all the elements that are within groups and this is a really helpful node. I use this quite often. Um, so we're gonna get the elements group. And if the element doesn't belong to a group, we'll get a null. 
but if it does, we'll get the groups, uh, the groups element in Dynamo. What we can do with this is actually check the groups work set. So I'll just look for clockwork, clockwork work set. And somewhere in here, there should be the work set node. I do find there's, there's almost too many hits for words in the clockwork package sometimes. I'll just look for work set, um, work set element. There we go. So retrieve the work set of a given element. And we want to get the work set off that host group. And then we also want to get its name. So we'll get the name plus node, which is a, a really effective way to obtain the name of a work set because it's quite hard to get the name of a work set with standard nodes. So now we should have the name where it's not a null. So you can see we've picked up the name of that work set there, which is 05 site. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just add a prefix to these particular recurrences so that in our schedule, we can identify which ones belong to a group and know that we have to deal with them in a special manner. So I'll just make a string and I'm gonna prefix these with the syntax group semicolon space. And the plus node essentially just adds a prefix in this case. So you can see now that we've manipulated these and our nulls are still null. Let's also get a is null check to get Boolean lists or true falses to tell me when I'm dealing with an element in a group or not. So when I'm not dealing with an element in a group, it'll be null and true. And if I am dealing with an element in a group, it'll be false. So, because it's not a null. Okay, so we're just gonna get another element work set and element name plus node. And we're just gonna go back to the start and run this over all elements of category. And note that the script will successfully find the work set of elements in groups as well. It will read its work set parameter. But in this case, we don't wanna just call this that. We wanna use find a way to bring together these two lists so the user can see which ones are in groups. Cause you can't just go and change the work set of elements in groups. So to select grouped and non-grouped elements at the same time from a schedule would be very inconvenient because you wouldn't be able to set the parameter of these elements because the grouped ones would stop you from doing so. So what we're gonna use is the standard if node because we're dealing with two lists of equal length. We've got a list of nulls and the grouped prefix and we've got a list of the work sets of the other elements. So we're gonna run in this Boolean to test and when it's true, we wanna put in the value of our standard element group work set and when it's false, we want to feed in the group version. And what we should end up with is a mixture of those two lists mixed up by the true and false conditions. And you'll see that here we go, we've got the grouped elements where they're grouped now. So this is essentially the, the parameter name we're going to set. So we're going to do a set parameter by name. And of our original elements that we found, we're going to set these values to the parameter in this case, I've called it manual work set. Manual work set. And that's pretty much it. So what we should be able to do is now just run our scripts. And you'll know it worked if you get a list of all the elements, which means the parameter was successfully set. Let's do the same for our doors, just to show that the script is flexible. As long as the parameter exists and the elements on a work set, you shouldn't run into any issues. And I'll just run. And there you go. You can see it's also successfully set the door as well. And you can see its values that it's set there. Cool. Um, so let's just jump into Revit and check out how we can use this field now that it's available as a schedulable field. So we can just select this wall and we can see this value has been populated with its respective actual work set. So pretty handy. Uh, but what? let's make a wall schedule and see what we can do with this. So we're just going to add, we're going to add the field, uh, let's do, just add type and we'll also add manual work set. I'm going to go to formatting and just hide manual work set because I'm going to make manual work set a header. So I'm going to click header. I'm going to add a blank line and then I'm going to sort by type and I'm going to turn off itemize every instance. So every row will essentially represent a family type or all elements of that family type sorted by work set as well. So I'll just jump into this view and go WT for window tile. And I'll just expand this row so I can actually read this. So we can see we've got internal work set, facade work set, structure and grouped. So you can see that those grouped elements got picked up. So again, remember, we can't just change that work set. 
So we'd have to actually change the host group in this case. So what we do is we'll just set our work set in this case to structure to fix these. Note that this parameter doesn't change because it's manual. So it doesn't update automatically. You can update it just by picking on, its, on these elements and reassigning their parameter manually. Because you can modify these values by group instance, remember? Cool. Um, let's say that like a, a few of my internal walls were on the wrong work set. They were on, um, let's say, facade. So I'll just grab a whole bunch of them, which is pretty common. People do tend to put things on the wrong work set. So this would have had its facade value populated and also be on the facade work set. So now I can see in my schedule, this is what it would have looked like when I got to it. And I can see that I have some interior partitions on my facade work set, which is wrong. So if I left click in here, middle click in my active view, I retain my selection. So I can just go to my manual work set field and say, this is gonna become internal. And then I'll just do a select previous. If I lose my selection, so you right click, select previous, a really handy command. And I can just change their work set as well to internal. And there you go, I've essentially just audited the work sets of my walls. Um, so a really handy technique. And obviously you can do this for doors, roofs, anything that has a work set associated to it. So nearly anything in a Revit workshare model. So a really handy little workflow. Um, I think I'm gonna find it very useful in future projects when I'm auditing work sets. So hopefully you will too. So thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I upload videos two to three times a week and will continue doing so for a very long time. Um, if you have any comments or feedback about this video or the workflow, um, feel free to leave it down below or get in touch with me. Um, thanks again to Mohammed for uh, questioning me on this topic. It was a really interesting one and I hope you found it interesting as well. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care.